and welcome to the new stimulus package. Us. I'm Ken Johnson, your host, and we've got a really good program lined up for you today. And I uh, just want to say happy Veterans Day to all those veterans out there watching. And we got uh, some veterans in the studio with me today, some of my, <laughs> some of my buddies. Yeah. Uh, happy Veterans Day, and thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Happy yes, Veterans Day. Sir. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, sir. And uh, we have uh, uh, Chief Priestley, Chief Leonard Priestley, and uh, uh, Practitioner Jones, C. Jones. Yes, sir. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of security, uh, not just uh, security in 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 in, uh, in businesses, but security in the community. Yeah, and the importance of com uh, s security. So. Uh, Ms. Priestley, would, would you tell us about uh, security? What, what's, uh, why is security important? Well, let's put it like this. Um, the security has been around since the beginning of time, and, and it has evolved with the need of the community. As far as we're concerned, we're training all the time because it changes. We were just sitting here talking about the riots, and I was at 973 Market, and also the earthquake. I was at the same location. And without security, both of those would have been more turmoil than it was. Uh, could you give us the, uh, uh, the reason why? What, what, what happened? Well, um, for the riots, it was kind of a situation where it not being expected, neither was the uh, earthquake, not being expected it means that you have to pull your senses together to be able to control the environment, um, the atmosphere, the people that are coming, that are looking for help, and those that uh, are planning to do more harm than what's already going on. So you have to be prepared for that mentally. Mm. Okay. So, so, so basically, you not you forgot about yourself. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you forgot about running away and getting getting the safety. Well, it, it, we were just talking about that too. You know, you took on a, even in the military, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We we took an oath. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sworn in as in-house special police. I took an oath. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was a Boy Scout, Cub Scout. Mm -hmm. We took an oath. Okay, oh, uh, right. So what happens basically is when you take that oath, it doesn't really sink in until something happens. Mm -hmm. And I think Jones could they're probably. I, even though I was in the military, I was never in the war zone, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm quite sure that Jones could share some, uh, from the veteran's point of view, how it was to be there and all of a sudden there's no place to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Would yeah. you explain um, what, 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 the, what he's touched, what he's touched what, on? What he's touching bases on, we take an oath, is uh, foreign and, and domestic. That means once we go into the, in the enemy line, uh, or uh, bl uh, we call it a black op, a, uh, a black op, that's what it's called. Black, black up, op, op, a black op. Yes, that's a black op. That means you're going into uh, enemy line. Mm. Um, there's no turning back. Mm. So there's no turning back, and there, uh, you know, it, it takes a very brave, very brave person actually to be, uh, you know, and and like and like I say all the time, you know. Uh, uh, I take my hat off to, the, you know, even when I was in boot camp, the person who geared me up for all that because I didn't sign up for all that. But once I got there, mm -hmm. you know, I just started liking what I was doing in the military and just kept taking the next stage more and more and more, you know, and then the f finally the fear just goes away. Is that know? right? And that's just the same thing in security. You know, when, you, when you're when training, just like with SPOA, uh, Excellent Security, you know, when you first start, you know, some people ain't never did security before. But once you start practicing it, and listening to other people's ideas with it, that's how you grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use that as the same way as in the military because when you go through boot camp, you do the same thing. You train, you train, you train. Once you keep on training, you get you get comfortable with the way you're training, and then you learn different techniques on how to handle it because safety is first. Mm -hmm. You know, and just like in the military, safety is first because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that everybody come home. Mm -hmm. You know, and while I'm speaking on the military, I'd like to send a shout out to all my comrades out there who serve Oscar Delta 119, United States Army. 
Thank you. Right on. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know, we'll get it there. <laughs> right on, right yeah, on, yeah. right on. Uh, and, uh, well, we we have this little thing uh, uh, in in the organization SPOA. There's different departments, committees, and projects trying to uh, bring about a, a well-rounded organization, and and the organization was set up to assist the members in whatever their needs are. Mm-hmm. To be a well-rounded person, mm-hmm. okay. So we get into an army, Marines <laughs> type of situation sometimes, mm-hmm. and we talk about different uh, things about the army, different things about the, the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. The Marine Corps was the only branch that you had to volunteer for, mm. yes. and uh, everything else was um, um, drafted or whatever. But you had to volunteer to be a Marine, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what we're just talking about the organization. Right. Uh, we don't want anybody to push into the organization because we're serious about our training. Mm-hmm. And um, and so you have to volunteer mm-hmm. to train with us. Mm-hmm. And that way you have to accept our training as we have it already set up. Mm-hmm. And as far as fear goes, you, uh, there's a lot of tours of duty that I've been on personally where guns were stuck in my mouth, I've cut with a razor mm-hmm. and all this. And I've seen guys that once that happened to them, they got, oh, I'm out of here, you mm-hmm. know. Yes. But if you're, if you're dedicated to whatever you do, you're going to be one of the best at the best. you got to train. Mm-hmm. you got to keep your mind mentally, physically, everything together as best you can because people are depending on you mm-hmm. for the earthquake. Mm-hmm. When I stood outside the door of 973 Market, everybody was calling mm-hmm. me to come help them. And they weren't even my clients, mm-hmm. people next door, whatever, because it was a panic situation. And that's the reason we st- uh, started Posse Commentatus. So in case of a civil emergency in the community, mm-hmm. who's suited and booted 24-7 in most communities? The security. 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 Mm-hmm. So all they have to do is to kind of change hats. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then they can control the community as best they can while the police, fire, and other first responders d- Take care of the rest of the situation. Mm-hmm. So is is that why you uh, is that why you uh, you have training? I noticed that I've been to some of your trainings and and you have training every I think it's every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, when you leave the studio today, it's you're going to go and tra- right. you, you have training. So uh, is this the type of training you 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 have uh, on a continuing basis? And I noticed all all of your uh, security officers. Practitioners. Practitioners are always sharp. I mean, they always, everything is so neat. Is is that important? Uh, Could you talk about that a little bit? Uh, Yes, we have a strict, uh, real strict uh, dress code. Uh, We have uh, inspections on every Tuesday night. That's part of our training education night. Uh, We have a strict, strict, real strict, all the way back down like a military uh, uh, boot camp camp. uh, dress code, uh, gig line, uh, everything, shirt clean, creased, and and we take that onto our tour of duty. So at all times, we have a dress code. Well, one of the things that uh, we like for our practitioners to do, and the reason we call them practitioners, is to keep reminding them that they're practicing their skills, personal and professional, all the time, on duty, off duty, mm-hmm. okay, in, in terms of dealing with that. But we ask, and there's no reflection on any security company or anybody else, but a lot of times with co- other companies, uh, the security go looking like anything. Right, I've so, seen. So, so what happens is they're going to be challenged more because of the way they look and carry themselves, and that makes it harder for everybody in the field. And, yeah. and, and with that dress code, it makes your, your, your training a lot easier because I have been on sites where me and another practitioner – can walk on somebody else's training site or their job, and they got security there. And the first thing they'll do, it it'll be all kinds of stuff going on. As soon as we walk in, it will cease. Yeah, yeah. They'll say, "Wow, <laughs> who is you guys?" You know, and uh, and and it, and it happens numerous and numerous of times. So uh, uh, the dress code is is, is 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 real good because the first thing you know, I can be just walking down the street now and in my uniform, and somebody say, "Wow." Who do you work for? Mm-hmm. And I, I always tell them it's a, it's a, it's a training op. Excellent security is a family affair, you know. Uh, and uh, like like I say, a lot of times, it, and make it so bad, they be handing cards out and just warning this company 
it comes raining, you know, on their sites. What do you see uh, uh, the future, what does the future hold for security? Is the security a dying business or is it, if somebody, if I, if I was looking for a career, could I, could well, I look well, at that? Uh, I think uh, security is one of the top 10 industries in the world, especially now with so much going on. We have our anniversary and also we're trying to make September Security and Law Enforcement Month because it begins the, the start of the holiday season, if you will. And after that, it just goes on and on. And with so much going on nowadays, security has to be more intent on what they're doing and not just looking at it as a job. They're looking at it as a way to secure the people who are paying them. And as far as that goes, if you're good at security, you'll never be without a job. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I can put it. How long has uh, Excellent Security been in existence? Okay, there's actually three components to it. The Special Police Officers Association was started in 1974 um, to support its members, who were mostly special police officers, sworn in by the city and county of San Francisco. And we created this organization to help us if we needed extra security or wanted some time off and so forth. And then we started It's a Family Affair because we wanted to support the whole family unit. And then we were doing security, and someone says, well, you, you need to have a license to do security. So we started Excellent Security Services, mm -hmm. okay, to remind us why we were training. And it became a licensed security company. So whoever we were working for had a licensed company. I'm sorry, I thought I turned my phone <laughs> off. Well, that's okay. My bad. So at any rate, um, that's how the whole the whole situation come about, and this is our fortieth year, or our fortieth anniversary, or our fortieth session, as an organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm I'm just curious. What, what do you think it would be like if it wasn't no security? Chaos, straight chaos. <laughs> you know, uh, security is the first line of defense. You know, uh, just like when the Marines used to go in. I hate to say Simplify. this. <laughs> when the Marines, when the Marines go, used to go in, they was the first line of defense because they would go in, you know, and uh, uh, we would just bag them up most of the time like that. Or else we would go in a special, you know, special op uh, and uh, – go out on our own like that. But most of the time, I, I, I would say security is just like being the Marines, first line of defense, mm -hmm. you know, because they see things and then they call in, like the uh, Chief Policeman said earlier, they call in, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, uh, the police. The back, right, the you know, and then, and, then, and then the report they have to give, they, what they go off is what the security is saying, you know. So it's, it's man, it's very important, very important. Yeah, it seems to me, I mean, that's a, a pretty dangerous job, man, because, uh, you know, when something happens, uh, everybody's running away, and you guys are running toward <laughs> see, see, and that's You guys are I, running toward the, the, the confusion to try to s calm it down. See, see, and that's what I like about our Tuesday nights here. That's our educational night. See, we go through extensive training how to handle certain situations because a lot of times security can cause a problem, too. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to talk a person, and talk to them right in the right manner, right tone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different techniques to go. And so on these Tuesday night meetings that we do have, we go through some of them trainings. Uh, how mm -hmm. would you handle this situation? Your do's and don'ts. And you know what I'm saying? And, and one of the things about the Tuesday night and talking like that, someone sitting in a meeting hears that, and then maybe eventually it comes up, wow, I just heard that at a meeting. meeting. And let me try it mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with it or they just went through something, mm -hmm. and now they f see a different way to do that. Mm -hmm. So we talk to each other, kind of like wh what happens on our tours of duty so we're more prepared if we ever have to train in that area. Yes. So I if, if for the some viewers out there was interested in security, uh, are your Tuesday meetings open to the public, or, or and where, or, or is it a secret where they are, uh, are uh, at? Or? Well, they are, it's not a secret, but if you don't know someone, it's going to be hard to find it. But we've, what we're doing, um, and we'd like to, to do a shout-out to Carl's Jr. in San Francisco on 7th Street mm -hmm. and as well as 5th Street who have given us training hours to um, 
put, uh, to work on our security skills. Mm -hmm. But they've given us a part of their lobby at 7th Street to turn it into a security and law enforcement resource center. Mm -hmm. So if you ever pass by 7th Street and look on the side window, you'll see a window full of papers and information. So we're going to be using that for that. But the resource center is especially during the holiday season. You don't know how hard it is for security officers who don't have transportation uh, to get from one side to another side. They live over in the East Bay and they work in San Francisco. At 12 midnight, the buses stop. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to figure out how to get home or riding buses or whatever they have to do um, to get home or to get settled for a while. So now they can come by Carl's Jr. and sit and, and not be hassled in the, in the lobby. Okay, that's that's uh, Carl Jr.'s here in San Francisco. In San Francisco, yes, 7th Street. 7th mm -hmm. Street. Yeah, that's uh, that's right by the board station, as a matter of fact. Well, exactly. Yes. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, really good location. Right. And uh, I want to say shout-out to uh, uh, Carl Jr.'s management for allowing yes, uh, this yes, yes. dynamic uh, security service to uh, to be there and to serve them. Uh, so um, um What's coming up? Do you have anything that's coming up? Any any special? Uh, well, the one I know this is Christmas season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, one of the things that we're looking for now is anyone that would like to train with us just to get a feel of training in security. Uh, we're doing a special situation. Uh, our next meeting is at, is it Northern Police Station? Or uh, no, uh, Calvary. Calvary Hill uh, Baptist Church. Now, uh, since he mentioned Calvary Hill, uh, and, and no disrespect to anybody, but we have a lot of meetings. We have a chaplain's department. We try to stay spiritually endowed, mm -hmm. and we feel um, we'd like to see if we can help any of the churches to have some of their m men and women who might be looking for extra work during the holiday season, and we'd like to try out security, especially Black Friday. Um, you know, they should come down and talk to us about it and see how we can help you. Mm -hmm. yes. um, one of the things that's happening also is that uh, somebody came up to me and told me that their son was trying to get into security because of his background. He didn't think he could get into security. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been working with this program for a while now, mm -hmm. and maybe you would like to talk about it? Uh, yes, first I'd like to make a correction. That's uh, Calvary Hill Community Church. Not Baptist Church, yeah, Community Church. Is yeah. that here in the city? Yes. Uh, yes, that's in San Francisco here. Okay. That's on uh, International uh, Industrial, Industrial, four, uh, 141 Industrial Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I can give a little shout out about my background. Uh, you know, I, uh, I did two tours of military uh, action. I did the Gulf, and then I went to Desert Storm. When I got out of the military, I thought the world owed me something. And I just came out and just, uh, you know, went plumb crazy. Went crazy. You know, yes, I got up, hooked up on some drugs and just, you know, and uh, turned my whole life upside down. You know. Oh, man. You know, gave it all to the devil. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I, I had a rude awakening. And uh, I sat back and just really, really, you know, uh, just uh, started going to jail. You know, just just ruined myself. You know, and uh, every time I go there, they would look at my record and say, "Wow, dude, you served in the military." So they kept giving me breaks, kept giving me breaks, kept giving me breaks, and finally, I just uh, submitted. You know, and uh, surrendered all. Uh, and then I came to this uh, organization, SPOA. And I thought I messed up so much that I would never, <laughs> never get a guard card. I said, "Wow, <laughs> you know, not you know, with this record, not right? with this, not 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 the stuff that I did." Uh, you know, and. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, God is good. You know, and, and that's what I like about this organization because it's it's uh, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a spiritual base. You know, uh, and uh, and that's what hold me here because when I, I went to one training night, one night somebody told me it was a job, and they told me when I got there, I found out it was something totally different that it was training. And once I start start sitting there and just start listening to him, and uh, the guy opened it up in prayer. It kind of little touched me, you know. It made me <laughs> say, you know, want to be a part of that, you know, because I was looking for change. Right, right. You know, and to make it short, because I know I'm short of time. You know, uh, this organization really reached out to me, man, and uh, you know, I'm grateful for it. You know, and that's why I stick around. You know, I'm really grateful. You know, you know, it gave me a. Uh, I always say this: a second chance at a first class life. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know, and uh, I appreciate it. You know, and I and I advise. You know, all the felons, veterans, you know, that's running around out there. You know, you're looking for change. You want something different. Look us up. You know, uh, we on a website. We got a website here somewhere. Um, but uh, for sure, you know. Thank you. Okay, you mentioned the website. What what what, what is the website uh, address? Um, well, it's on. It's we have a couple of websites, but let me say this about the websites: we've created so many different departments and committees and so forth. We are looking for members and people who have other skills other than security mm -hmm. uh, to help us build a better communication system. Okay, along with that, but GoDaddy uh, is one of our websites, mm -hmm. uh, and um, we have a couple other websites that we're we're starting to build on. But you can always give us a call at 643-1400 and ask for the websites okay. that we have up and so forth. Or you can come to any Tuesday meeting. Um, you're always welcome. And if you're not sure where the meeting of calls juniors is a key place to get information written and otherwise 24-7. Uh, yes. Also, uh, this Tuesday, we're, we're calling on all, all military or all anybody just want to just get into this field to come to our Tuesday night meetings. Roll call. Roll, roll call. call. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 We mm -hmm. just we calling on all. If you did, if you just think you fit this criteria that we're talking about, come on down. Even if you don't think you come see what you, come see what we're talking about. Uh, we got Black Friday coming up, and uh, we're looking for a few good men and women. And women. Okay. Okay, uh, folks, you've heard it, and our time is running down. So we really appreciate. Uh, you coming in and those one those people interested in the security go by and check them out you know it's a really at a convenient location thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you next week well, thank you for having well, us thank right you. On. thanks guys right on. thank you sir okay that's that's it oh let me stop that